Oh, good morning. Oh, my back's killing me. <coughs> oh, I did a load of gardening yesterday. Weeding, getting grass out. Got a barbecue in a couple of weeks' time, and uh, want to make the garden look nice. And visual display boards as well. Shut up. So I <laughs> decided. That Radio 4, honestly, they're such a laugh. They are, they are go, I mean, they always were the sort of upper middle class and voices of the establishment, but now I think they've gone completely. They they are, the problem is that they're losing their audience. Their, their audience is dying off. And they've got far more people in the sort of the 50s, 60s and 70s now than they have in their 20s, 30s and 40s. And they honestly, they don't know what to do about it because they broadcast the same thing to everybody at the same time. And that, uh, you know, that sort of uh, way of broadcasting to people was was great when, you know, everyone was talking about who shot JR. But that was pre-internet days. And now, um, you know, I mean, if you're going to watch television, the chances are you're going to watch just the bits you like, aren't you? You know, you're you might have a skybox and you'll just record it and then if you like pole dark you'll just watch sit down and watch two or three pole darks or um, you know whatever you like Game of Thrones whatever and that's not even BBC I mean that's you know old Rupert Murdoch and Jerry Hall are bringing us that so what do you do if you're like a government broadcasting agency that's you know like you used to having a high audience and pretty much relies on having a massive audience because you want your ideas and everything to be projected to the maximum number of people possible and and that's not the broadcasting genre that's in favor anymore you know nobody wants to <laughs> they don't even help themselves either I mean you can find if you want some interesting investigative real sort of bleeding edge reporting um, you're not likely to find it on the BBC. They had a, in, in response to the this sort of criticism, they are sort of trying to deflect it. So they have like, um, what's it called? Uh, no, I, I say, I'm thinking of Ask Me Anything because that's the Reddit thing, but basically it's a BBC AMA. Uh, points of view, that's it, God. Sorry, I mean, I would be, I, I don't prepare these talks, if you can call them talks, rants, blatherings, doesn't matter what you call them, but I mean, I, you know, if I'd made up my mind in advance what I was going to talk about, I would be better prepared, but well, not much better prepared, but perhaps a bit, and uh, yeah, so they're, they're points of view, and then, uh, and they basically follow the format of, they find someone who's got a point of view that's not fairly contradictory to it's critical of the way that the BBC handles something and then that person is then allowed to read out their letter in a pre-recorded format and then uh, they bring on like a senior producer to rubbish them um, I think they have actually uh, possibly beefed up the criticism a bit you know by perhaps allowing people to be in the studio to debate because they I think they realized that you know, their, their standard format of neutralising the opposition by putting them in a radio car or interviewing them in a faceless remote surgery somewhere and then having the minister live uh, is, you know, it's, most people have seen through that now. But it doesn't ever change anything, you know. It really just provides an opportunity for the BBC to say how they, uh, you know, why they did it. You know, just say, like, you know, you don't understand. It's the old... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the old contract debate all over again, isn't it? That uh, we're going to bring this contract in because the opponents really don't understand why it's such a good thing, and so I'm sure if they understood it, then they would vote for it. So the 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 the, the, the dental referendum, you know, all over again. And uh, what else do they do? They have a, I mean, they have a. They have a wide variety of programmes on the Dewey Decimal System and really nothing at all about anything that 
most people I think are more interested in. Uh, I mean, as you know, I have, a, I have an interest in economics, and so I tend to watch programs that concentrate on economics. And so I'm, I'm doing things like watching uh, Janet Yellen talking to the Congress, you know, chairman of the American Federal Reserve talking to the Congress. Uh, saying on the one hand that the, the Federal Reserve is the, one of the most open central banks in the world and yet on the other hand saying that it must remain one of the closed central banks in the world uh, so, so in order not to bring political pressure to bear on their decision making um, which is a sort of a shorthand way of saying that we can we can make our own bad decisions without Congress <laughs> enforcing their bad decisions on us so, but the point is, I mean, I don't get any of my news from the BBC anymore. The don't know who their market is anymore now, really, other than the people for whom they've all traditionally been, you know, the, the, the opinion formers, the people who tune in to find out what is they need to think about various bits and bobs. Uh, because they can't really, you know, they're too lazy to do their own research and make up their own minds. But, um, you know, I mean, I had a complaint while we're on the subject of complaints. Uh, I had a patient who was a member of a family of three who's decided to find another dentist. And uh, the other two members of the family are staying with me because the person who's leaving acknowledges that they're quite happy. So it's uh, an interesting one, that one. It's it's a basic disagreement between me and her about really what dentistry should be and she wrote and just said she was going elsewhere and could we amend the direct debit etc which is oh, that's fair enough and now what do you do I mean I don't know what your approach is you know you can't help but be annoyed at that you know you can't help because you're you've got the same attitude haven't you as the GDSC over the referendum vote and the BBC over points of view which is that surely this person is doesn't understand what we're trying to do here because some more explanation and a slightly higher IQ at their end might uh, they might come to a different decision but it's always pointless to think like that you know you have to say to yourself they, I always say well, if it's best for them it's best for us we don't want to and that includes when the staff leave as well if it's best for them it is obviously best for us so what the receptionist did, which I was a very bright thing to do, and uh, you know everyone should do, is just write an email back and say, "I'm sorry to see you're leaving. You know, have we upset you? Is there anything? Did we do anything wrong? You know, can you just in a, in a, just like a couple of sentences, can you just let us know why you've left?" And this feedback is immensely valuable. You know, when when uh, I use a service. I am overflowing with feedback. In fact, when uh, the Langburson people asked if they could uh, have our support in sending out their survey, we said, yes, and they said, can you just comment on it? You know, would you like to? I don't know whether they want our input or whether, because they don't involve us in their study design. So really, I don't, I can't say whether or not their uh, questions are appropriate some of their questions questionnaires actually are more tricky than you think you know so you can for example you can allow people to tick two boxes which is like mutually exclusive that's that's an easy mistake to make and one that they'd made but I sent them back quite a lot of feedback about whether or not to use uh, Lang and Burson in the singular or the plural you know because they can't say uh, Lang and Burson as in we have released this survey because Lang & Burson is a, a single, a singular thing, it's a, it's a company and what it does, it does as an it, it's, an, it's not a we. I mean you can say we the people at Lang & Burson but you can't say we Lang & Burson. It's Lang & Burson has done this, not Lang & Burson have done this. So and uh, so it was a hopeless, uh, their, their accompanying letter was a hopeless mess, a grammatical mess which I mean, let's face it, okay, probably 95% of the population would not even bat an eyelid at. But you don't want to alienate the 5% who went to grammar schools 
by making the letter a complete mess because by the law of association of quality that um, it's going to make them assume that the survey is a complete mess as well and the reasons that you're doing it is a complete mess and this is again is, is another lesson for dentists because if you look scruffy people assume your dentistry is scruffy if your surgery looks pretty run down and repaired on the cheap then people assume that your the bridges and crowns are going to be pretty pretty cheap and nasty as well so you have to you know to project quality you have to demonstrate quality you know you mustn't have an old old uh, CRT TV in the, in, the, in the corner you've got to have a decent OLED everything as I've always said in the surgery has got to be at or above the standard that the patients leave behind them when they leave their house so <clears throat> because it's a, it's a shared space it's a commons and everyone's contributing to it so you should be able to afford to buy something that looks like you know more than one person had to buy it but anyway so that's that's the law of association of uh, in terms of quality but we were talking about uh, customer feedback and you know uh, I <clears throat> when when people say you know what do you think I, I tell them what I think and I don't tell them because I'm like oh ooh, you know rubbing my hands together this is a chance to get tell someone what I think Basically, I look at it from the point of view of someone who I think is, is reasonably dispassionate, dispassionate about the provision of goods and services, and I tell them uh, from a consumer's point of view, which is something you can't get as a, as a provider, as a service provider, the one thing you can't get is your, the view of the service consumers. So when a service consumer gives you their service consumer's eye view of your service, you better just buck up because you won't get many of these either. You know, you really won't. If you're lucky, if you get two or three people a year, I mean, I've got hundreds of comments saying, brilliant service, go there again, Mr. Watson, he's lovely, etc., etc. But for someone to literally sit down and say, look, okay, Derek, if I was going to improve, if I was running your service and I was going to improve it, these are the three things I would improve. You can't get that sort of feedback. And funnily enough, it's that sort of feedback, which is really what you want. I mean, comments saying, yeah, you're brilliant, are great for your website, and you should get a load of those, and you should put them all over your website. Because I tell you, when I, I always ask people how they got to the surgery, and they always say one of two things, either personal recommendation or um, we search for you on the web. I found you on the web. And I say, what? Well, you Googled me. And they say, yeah, Google, yeah, Google. And if you say, if you take it just a bit further and say, what was it when you Googled us, what was it that made you decide to come and see us? Um, most of the time they will say, um, it's, uh, you know, your, your site was just plastered with people saying how brilliant you were. And that's what people want. You know, that again, it's just personal recommendation. You know, they think all these people can't be wrong. That's the basis that they're making this decision. They're thinking, I'm gonna go with the herd because we all know from David Attenborough tells us that if you're in a flock of birds or a herd of bison you can't go too far wrong if you stick in the herd <clears throat> the the people who get picked off don't they by the by the lions are the ones who wander off and think oh that that's a nice water hole over there like there's nobody there I, I think I'll have a decent drink of that one and next thing you know they've got three lions hanging off their neck so <clears throat> so yeah, so get get feedback and give feedback. But I've got to say this feedback is not it's not altogether well received necessarily. <laughs> it's uh, you know you, you will <clears throat> occasionally give feedback to people and they will they will do what the BBC do is so they'll just come straight back and say yeah well uh, you know there's a reason why we do it that way or you probably don't understand the system we've got here or uh, various other you know and what they're doing is they're saying they're salvaging their pride they're saying uh, they don't you know I don't believe that criticism is justified you know you can you can get lost I'm doing my best here <laughs> and you've got to get over that so when I got this criticism when I got this letter and basically 
So uh, Penny wrote back to her and said, you know, what have we done? And she said, well, Mr. Watson, she said, he's, I've been with the practice for a long time, she said, you know, two relocations, several, uh, two owners, several dentists, etc. And, um, and Mr. Watson, you know, he seems like a nice bloke and everything, but um, he's not, uh, I don't think, you know, he's a bit casual. He's a bit casual. That's the first thing she said. He's a, and of course, you always take this the wrong way. I mean, sh I took that immediately to mean that I was not, I was a bit slapdash and didn't really care much about looking properly for things. And, and I suppose when you've been checking teeth for 35 years, and you know that most of your patients have got a reasonably low decay rate. You're not, you know, when I qualified, I spent a lot of time looking for decay, a lot. And, all, and almost no time looking for gum disease because everybody had it. And nowadays, the decay rates are so much lower, but there's still nobody's treating gum disease. So I spend like a very, very small amount of time now just confirming that the patient's decay rate is still low. And far more time, um, uh, worrying about doing full mouth pocket charting and plaque control and checking that they're using the right brush and stuff like that. Now, the um, second part of the criticism was that I told her literally to do a lot less than what she was doing. And she was a classic case of uh, someone who'd been over the years told that uh, she got a brush twice a day and then if that didn't work then three times a day and then because she still had plaque on her teeth uh, to use mouthwash and then to use floss and then to use in space brushes um, and then to come and see the hygienist and then to come and see the hygienist more often um, so it was a means what I call a means based approach you know it's all about the means uh, but never never heard of a disclosing tablet and she acknowledged that she said Mr Watson introduced me to disclosing tablets which, is which I did find useful um, but you know but he told me to stop doing everything else and which I which obviously found less than useful so, so really what she's yearning for, she's hankering for an old, what I would call an old fashioned type of dentist or a hygienist, one that would shout at her and uh, hector her for not, for not brushing properly, you know, and <laughs> oh God. we had somebody in last week who's a dominatrix, I asked her what she did, she was a dominatrix. And I thought this, what this woman needs is a dental dominatrix. That's what she's used to, that's what she likes, and that's fine, you know. What, what I think that the problem is that with some people, I mean, and it is a, it is a problem that with my approach, which is an ends-based approach, which is basically, I don't care if you brush your teeth with a banana and a toilet brush, as long as when you come see me, all the plaque is gone as witnessed by the disclosing solution that that is all about the means and they say well, well how should i do it i said i don't know you can see it i said you can use a brush just get it off i said there is no technique and there is no technique there is no technique forget the modified bass technique forget this this technique whatever technique if someone shows you a technique then they're doing it wrong disclose the plot get it off so she's going to see another dentist and that's fine and what you have to do is you just have to be absolutely charming and say I'm very sorry on this occasion we couldn't be of any help <clears throat> and let her go let her go because she is you know the ones hopefully you'll be gaining more than you're losing and she our, our style just didn't suit her you know we were just too we, we made it look too easy. She'd been brought up to think that looking after your teeth was a desperate battle with the, the forces of darkness. And I'm like, yeah, really, actually, it's only this slight of bacterial film on your teeth. If you get that off, then, then chances are, you know, everyone's gonna have an easy life. And I like an easy life. But no, she wants to, so she's gonna go back, that's fine. And what'll happen is, I don't know whether she'll carry on using the disclosing tablets. If she does, then, then that'll be good, but... Okay, so complaints. Just be charming. The more charming you are, the better. No, I'm not saying that, you know, sometimes if, if you're trying to get rid of someone, then you can be charming because it does piss them off a bit. And if they've pissed you off, then that is sometimes a bit, that is a bit, how can I put it? It's difficult to resist. 
But if a patient says they're leaving and they're good enough to provide you with some feedback as to why, have a think about the feedback and consider it. In my case, I considered it and I think that it's just a mismatch in terms of treatment philosophies. That's fine. She needs to see another dentist. In the same way, as you're, if you're a preventive dentist and someone really just wants to come in as and when they get toothache, then again, there's a, there's a mismatch, isn't there, in philosophies there. Yeah, so so I'm going to write a lovely letter and say thank you so much for coming and if we can be of assistance in the future, please do let us know, you know. I'm, I'm sorry that on this occasion we couldn't help you. So, But she's she has helped me by telling me why she left. OK, nice. Uh, nice day. Overcast. Rained last night. Might rain again today, but we don't mind rain. As long as it doesn't rain in two weeks when I'm having my barbecue. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye.